Hello there, this is Coach Ikram, and welcome to our second video in the thermochemistry unit. This one is going to be on energy units and calorimetry. Let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we need to understand is the definition of a calorie. A calorie is going to be the quantity of heat that it's needed to raise the temperature of one gram of water by one degree Celsius. It's a little bit different than a food calorie, and we talked about this in our previous video. A food calorie with a capital C is used in nutrition, and essentially, it's the equivalent of a thousand calories or one kilocal. But when we're dealing with nutrition and food labels, we capitalize it and still call it a calorie. And one calorie is going to be equal to 4.18 joules. And that number um, is actually, it's going to become familiar to you as it's also the specific heat of water. So, example, if you have a label on a candy bar and it says that it contains 180 calories as you read it on the candy bar, this is actually going to be 180 kilocalories. That's what it actually is, or 180,000 calories. We don't like, we don't use that because that's just, I mean, it's, it's a lot. Um, it makes more sense scientifically if we, if we assume that kilocals are capital calories. If we burn the sugar and the fat in the candy bar, it's going to release 180,000 calories of energy. That's what a calorie means. And so the above is 750,000 joules if we use the conversion from the last page. Heat capacity is the amount of heat that is needed to raise the temperature of an object by one degree Celsius. This is going to depend on mass and composition. So for example, it takes more heat to increase the temperature of a large pot of water than a small cup of water. It takes more heat to raise the temperature of water than of metal. Another really good example of this that I like to use is when you go to the beach on a really, really hot day and you're running from the sand to the water, the sand is really, really hot, but when you get to the water, it feels cooler. It's still sitting underneath the same sun. It's still subject to the same amount of heat, but because of the size of the body of water and the specific heat and heat capacity of water, the temperature of it is going to be slightly lower. So that's another good way of looking at it. Specific heat capacity, which is a term I kind of used on the last page, is the amount of energy it takes to raise the temperature of one gram of a substance, one degree Celsius, at a constant pressure. So that's kind of the new, the new concept there. It can be calculated using this equation right here. Okay, you've got specific heat capacity right here is going to be equal to Q, which can be calories or joules, over mass in grams over change in temperature. And you might recognize if you rearrange this equation, you end up with what, something we've used in the past, which is Q equals MC change in T. Q equals MCAT. Same concept. This is simply rearranged to reflect the specific heat capacity. The units for specific heat capacity are either calories over grams times degrees Celsius or joules degrees Celsius. And a, kind of a trick with that, when you look at that, those units, the calories, the grams Celsius, or the joules grams Celsius, that dictates the units for all your other variables in that equation. So for example, if you're using this as the unit that you've been given for your specific heat capacity, if you calculate Q, it's going to be in calories. And then water oops, has a very high specific heat capacity compared to other substances. And you'll be given a table of these values if and when needed. To calculate the heat required to change a substance's temperature, or T, we're going to use the following equation. Q equals MCP change in T, and also sometimes it's written with a lowercase q. Oh, MC delta T. Sorry about that. Okay. Q is going to be your heat absorbed or released. Remember, if you're absorbing heat, Q is a positive value. If you're releasing heat, Q is a negative value. Your M is going to be your mass in grams. It's important to note. Your specific heat capacity is a constant value. Either it will be given to you or you're going to be calculating it. And remember, it can be in either one of these two given units. And your change in temperature is going to be in degrees Celsius. Note for this, you're keeping it in degrees Celsius because you're trying to find the difference in the two. Essentially, it can be used as an absolute value number. You don't have to worry about converting it to Kelvin or anything like that because you're trying to find the difference. It's the change in your temperature. So let's do a practice problem. Looking at this first one. How much heat is absorbed by 500 grams of water as its temperature is increased from 14 to 75? So, I always like to write my givens out on the side. For some of you, this might seem a bit redundant, but it's important um, 
to make sure you don't forget anything, especially when we get into um, calorimetry problems a little bit later when you're trying to deal with two different substances. If you write it all out, you're less likely to make any errors. So let's start by looking at what we've got. We've got 500 grams of water. That's going to be my mass. Um, we do not know how much heat is absorbed by it, so that's what we're going to be looking for. We do know that since it's absorbed, that value should be a positive number, so keep that in mind. The change in um, temperature we know is 75 degrees Celsius um, minus 14. And you know change in temperature is going to be T final minus T initial. So it went from 14 to 75. So it's going to be 75 minus 14, and that actually equals 61. Okay, and then my C value, I'm going to come over here and I've got it actually on a little schnazzy thing here. And whoop, and we're dealing with water. And if we look at the specific heat of water on our little chart here, it says it is 4.18 joules over grams degrees Celsius. When you go ahead and plug all that in, Q equals a mass of 500 times 4.18 times 61. And you can also plug in your two temperature values for that. And you're going to get this. And remember, you have to take it to the number of significant figures, which is in this case, two significant figures. And there's your final answer, 130,000 joules. and see if you can do number two real quick. Pause the video. All right. Hopefully you wrote your givens on the left-hand side, and then you went ahead and plugged everything in. Here's the answer written out, okay? So you've got Q equals MCAT. They plugged in their Q value. The important thing to note is that your Q value is being absorbed, so it is a positive number in this case. You've got your mass. You don't know C. And then you've got your difference in change in temperature. Divide it out, calculate C, and you get 0.387 joules over grams degrees Celsius. Let's practice one more. Go ahead and pause the video and see how you do. All right, again, hopefully you wrote all your givens out to the side. Let's look at our work here. We've got Q equals MCAT. We plugged in. Um, again, we're adding energy, so it's a positive number right here. Um, we've got our 455 grams from right here. We've got our specific heat capacity, which is um, not given to us right here, but I do have it. Apologies, you probably could not actually figure out this problem without this. It's right up here. Sorry about that. Okay. So hopefully you kind of went ahead and plugged that in and did the work for that, apologies. Um, so then you plugged in your change in temperature. Remember, your change in temperature is going to be T final uh, minus T initial. So you've got your T final, which we don't know, and we do know our T initial. So when you solve it out, you're solving not for the whole change in T, but you're solving specifically for that final temperature, which we get to be 39.0 degrees Celsius. Let's move this out of the way. Oh, that definitely does what I did not want it to do. There we go. All right. Calorimetry. Calorimetry, by definition, is the accurate and precise measurement of heat change for chemical processes. Calorimetry is based on the below understanding. If you lose heat, you're a system and you lose heat, it's going to be the same as the heat that's gained by the surroundings. So Q lost by the system is going to be equal to Q gained um, by the calor calorimeter, which I hate that word, sorry, <laughs> calorimeter. Um, in this case, your surroundings is your calorimeter, okay? So if you have Q equals Q, and you know that Q is equal to MC delta T, you can now say if Q equals Q, that means this is equal to the MC delta T for the other Q. The one thing that's not on this slide that I think is important to note when I solve these problems in a minute, if you are losing energy, that means your Q value is going to be negative. So I always do it where I put a negative. I don't assume absolute value of change in temperature. And that's just the way I do it. And you're going to see two versions of that in the answers in the next few slides. But I like to say if Q is lost by the system, then it's a negative value, which means this whole piece is negative. And then when it's gained, that whole piece is positive. 
And if you do it, the math will always work out. Okay, in order for this process to be accurate and precise, it has to be carried out in the calorimeter because otherwise that heat's just gonna be lost to the surroundings and you won't be able to calculate it. And the calorimeter is gonna keep that heat intact and you're gonna be able to calculate it. Um, the first type of calorimeter is a constant volume or bomb calorimetry. It allows the reaction to take place inside the enclosed container, the bomb is what we call it, and it's surrounded by water. You're gonna measure the temperature change of the water. This bomb absorbs some of the energy, so the heat capacity must be considered in calculations. This basically allows for you to m measure the heat of the surroundings. The water then, therefore, is your surroundings. The second type of calorimeter is going to be coffee cup calorimetry. This is open, the coffee cup calorimetry is open to the surroundings. This allows the reaction to take place inside the insulated container, but it's not sealed. So you're going to measure the temperature change of the water, but it's important to note it's open to the surroundings. So heat can be lost in any gases that escape the cups, which makes it a little bit less accurate. So let's go ahead and practice one of these. Move this over. And I'm and pull this out first now so you can see all your specific heat values. So go ahead and write any of those down that you might need. In this case, we're dealing with liquid water. So you're going to want to look at the 4.18 joules over grams times degrees Celsius. All right, so when I do this problem, okay, I know that Q equals Q. So I'm going to set it up so where I've got MC delta T equals MC delta T. One of these has to be the water, and one of these has to be the metal in my problem, okay? I'm going to look at my metal here. My metal here states that the 25 uh, gram sample of a metal at 75 degrees Celsius is placed in the calorimeter containing 45 grams of water at 23 degrees Celsius. Those are the respective initial temperatures of my two, um, my system, my surroundings. The temperature stops changing at 29.4, okay? Essentially, both of them are gonna go to the same final temperature. So what's the specific heat of the metal? Assume the device absorbs no heat. My metal is going from 75 down to 29.4, which means my metal is gonna be losing heat. Therefore, when I solve it, I'm gonna say that my metal, this side of my equation is gonna be negative. My negative sign's a little high there, but my MCAT equals negative MCAT because my Q value would be negative for my metal. So let's go ahead and work this out. My mass of my water is 45 grams. My C value for water is 4.18 from the little blue tab I pulled out previously. My change in temperature is 29.4 minus 23. And remember, when you do subtraction, make sure you do your significant figures correctly. Then, and remember, that's final minus initial. That's what's happening there. Then on my other side, I've got negative. My mass is 25 grams. My specific heat, I do not know. That's what I'm saying for. And my change in temperature is final minus minus 75.0. Now note that when I subtract these two, I'm going to get a negative number, and there's also a negative number here. So when I multiply these two together, this one and this one, I end up getting a positive number, which does end up allowing for C to be positive. So it does work out at the end, even though you put this negative here. So if I go ahead and do all the math on this side, I get 1203.84. And then on this side, I get a positive 1140 times C. I multiplied this times this. Then to get C by itself and isolate it, I divide out and I get C equals 1.1 joules over grams degrees Celsius. And that's following the significant figure rules. Okay, go ahead and pause the video and see if you can um, figure out number two. All right, so let's go ahead and try it together. And I'm just gonna set it up for you. Um, so you've got Q equals negative Q. So I've got MC delta T equals negative MC delta T. So again, my substance A is heated to an unknown temperature, then it's dropped into water. The, the unknown temperature, you don't know what that initial temperature is, but you do know that it ends up um, at 70 degrees. And you know the water goes from 25 75. So that means my unknown substance lost that heat. So my unknown substance is going to be on this side of my equation. 
So let's go ahead and set it up. I'm going to put my water values over here. 00.0, 4.18. My change in temperature is going to be 70.0 minus 25.0. On the side with my metal, I know the mass, 88.5. I know my um, CP, right here, 1.20. And my change in temperature is going to be 70.0 minus something I don't know. So that's my final temperature. That's where it says it ends up, but I don't know what it started at. So go ahead and rearrange everything. You're going to end up with, on this side, um, 470250 equals negative 106.2, 70.0 minus ti. I'm going to divide both sides by the negative 106.2, so I'm going to get negative 4427.97 equals 70.0 minus ti. Add 70 to both sides. And then remember this negative sign, swap it over to the other side to make ti positive, and you're going to get ti equals... Um, there shouldn't be a negative sign there, apologies. 4497.97 degrees Celsius. And sorry the work's a little bit messy. I generally like to, I probably should have expanded the page, but hopefully it's moderately legible. All right, go ahead and try this third one. Okay, so let's go over it. Hopefully you knew to set up. You've got MC delta T equals negative MC delta T. And you've got 300 times 4.18. You get 9.6 when you subtract T final minus T initial. And that's two significant figures. So that's going to end up dictating our significant figures for the rest of the problem. Negative 58.4 for the mass of unknown metal. I don't know the C value for it. And then it's 29.3 minus um, 161. You get 1, 2, 3, 8, 4, 0.4, sorry, equals 7691.28 times C. And C is going to end up being 1.6 joules times grams degrees Celsius. So really, the heart of all of this is in the algebra. So you need to make sure that you're confident and comfortable with rearranging equations, distributing as needed, negative signs, and things like that. And that's going to make life a lot easier for you. Oh, that doesn't apply to you. That is it. That is our last slide for this um, section of the unit. So go ahead and go back and rework any problems that you didn't understand. Make sure that you can get the answers that I've put. Write down any questions that you have, and we will talk about it in class. Thanks.